there were 5,000 to 10,000 phytochemicals in cannabis sativa and every other plant in my garden. Some unique to cannabis, some common to all green plants, some common to all life. Every plant contains about 5,000 to 10,000 different phytochemicals. All of them biologically active. That shocks most people, but I can back it up in the literature. I'm James A. Duke. I've been very blessed at many turns in life. I'm still kicking, but not as far as I used to. It's always been my belief since I finally had my experience in Panama and learned the benefits of the natural drugs. The natural drugs are known to your genes, especially if it's a food that you've been eating for a long time or your family has, then your genes are used to that. But the unnatural drug is not uh, familiar to your gene. So the unnatural drug can have violent effects and violent side effects. The natural drug your body has gotten used to and it's, in my experience, mostly uh, safer, cheaper, and sometimes more efficacious than the synthetics. Most of our medicine is not necessarily coming from the natural world, but more of it should be coming from the natural world for our own health and for the environment's health. The synthetics are poisoning not only us, but our environment and the ecosystems as a whole. The mission of the Green Pharmacy is to present in an attractive way some of the most important medicinal plants in the world. Searching for the Holy Grail on the Appalachian Trail when I found that We have over 300 species in the garden, probably 60 species from China, probably 60 species from India. Makes an older man cocksure and a younger man secure. Makes an older woman younger and a younger woman hunger. Jim, sing, sing, Jim. Sing a little song and swing. And the Green Pharmacy shows, I think in a very appealing way, the most important medicines for about 80 diseases. But the garden is a healing experience in itself to some people. And if aromatherapy works, we got a lot of good aromatic plants, friends in the garden who can help a lot of ailments. And some of those same aromatic chemicals that are in marijuana are also in many other plants. Cineo, for example, is in most of the mints and it's also in uh, marijuana. In 1977, I was already with the USDA. I was in charge of a fairly big program, the cancer screening program, where the National Cancer Institute would give money to the USDA, and the USDA paid me and my laboratory, and we were sent to various parts of the world to collect plants for the anti-cancer screen. At that point, I started cataloging folklore of the plants of China because I was ultimately going to be sent to China to collect, and I think we collected 800 pounds of medicinal plants, which pretty well filled up the airplane's hold. It was a rather strange thing about the cancer studies in China. The National Cancer Institute said, if you gotta go for something, go for something that's poisonous. Because they were looking for a chemotherapeutic poison. And that's always been their modus operandi. 
I've been compiling on my phytochemical database. I retired in 1995 from the USDA, and I've been adding to that database ever since. Let me show you my tincture here now. This is from a non-poisonous plant called turmeric, and we have it in coconut oil. And of all the plants in the world, turmeric is the one that I would recommend most importantly for cancer. Now, my physician has been burning off lesions, precancerous lesions, here and here for years. And this is a precancerous lesion here. And I'm applying this messy goop to that cancer. And I predict that in two weeks that cancer will be gone. I used to use it on this knee as a salve for arthritis of the knee. And it is proven to be good for osteoarthritis. I remember that when I updated turmeric last time in my database, it was over 300 different reported uses, activities. It's a very valuable plant. Cannabis has that many too, or more. There have been several turmeric trials, clinical trials, done by MD Anderson. I suspect they have over a thousand studies there alone. It's been shown to cure almost every type of cancer and also to work in symphony with the chemotherapeutic poisons. But when you take the turmeric with the, that poison, you also lower the dose of the poison that you need to take. Therefore, I say something rather heretical. Even if a patient is on chemotherapy, I would advise them to take the turmeric too. I'm on the board of advisors to Phytex. It has some of the most important researchers on cannabis on their directorship. I was very pleased to accept Ethan's invitation to be on the board. I've kept him posted as I worked on my so-called CPAD database, Cannabis Phytochemicals Activity Database, and it's helped to prove to me that cannabis is one of the number one medicines in the world especially when it comes to probably about 30 different diseases. Pain, especially pain of, of cancer. I certainly was impressed with its activity in epilepsy, convulsions, and I would recommend it for Alzheimer's, uh, which is nibbling at me already. Hmm, maybe it's time for a, a, a tea break. <laughs> <laughs>
afraid of croaking. I've had such a good, good trip. It's been a great trip all the way. But I don't think that I ought to.